goodness, you scared me. I wasn't expecting you this early. I suppose I should get dressed. Before you ask, yes, this is a full bananas and pajamas get up and no, you can't buy it. I made it myself. Anyway, welcome back to episode three of A Very Welsh Park. Last week, we completed our car park and entrance building, whilst this week, we'll be adding the first attraction to the park. Yes, you heard that right. We're adding our first ride to the park and it's not just a ride, it's a coaster. That's right, coaster heads. Someone who can't build coasters is going to build a coaster. No outsourcing to Nerd Chacho this time, so brace yourselves. As you can see, I went with a B&M dive coaster. I created a mirrored version of Oblivion from Alton Towers. Why mirrored, you may be asking? I'm so glad you asked. This layout allows the drop to be centered to the entrance plaza, whilst the station and transfer tracks have direct access to the exterior service road. With the coaster complete, it's time for some custom supporting. Wanting full control over the positioning of these supports on the drop, I opted for making my own. Time for the hole itself. As you can expect, there's going to be a lot of spinning things on an axis this week, so get ready for that excitement. I created one side, mirrored it precisely, then spun that baby round. Right round. In an effort to conserve peace count and sanity, I only continued the tunnel as far down as would be seen before complete darkness. I applied the same logic for the exit of the tunnel too. Also, if you're wondering how all of these angles are lining up perfectly, it was a complete fluke and is about to end abruptly. I pulled the terrain in slightly to stop any light bleed. It would have been terribly easy just to let the coaster come up out of the terrain, but sadly that's not how things work in the real world. Our coaster needs full support and the surrounding earth needs retaining. I created a concrete trench using Hydro's plaster walls. If you're screaming at your screen saying, Moomin, why on earth are you moving one piece at a time? Well, remember when I said that perfect alignment would end abruptly? Any time I tried to move multiple pieces, it would flounder like a drunken ostrich. Don't believe me? Here, stop the time lapse. This is me trying to move multiple walls. So there, now I hope you can feel my pain through the rest of this build. With our massive hole complete, all that's left is some surrounding foundations.
Back over at our first hole, it's time to theme. Theme? Theme? But what is the theme? OK, fine. Are you ready? Our park's theme will be… Adventure. Terribly exciting. Using more mad spinny axis skills, I created some themed safety fencing using temple pieces, facade scaffolding, and chain link fencing. Time to abseil into the depths. Our hole needs some effects, and for that we need access. I started with a cage ladder to determine the depth before creating a concrete ledge. Health and safety time. I added some fencing and a safety line for our lovely maintenance staff to clip their tiny harnesses to. Time for the effects themselves. I installed some super high-tech smoke machines and added some access in the form of manhole covers. So sexist. I personally think they should be people hole covers. As a final touch, I threw some signage and an electrical box onto the wall. Over at our big old trench, I added another cage ladder and some filthy clutter, including a slightly deflated football that some unfortunate child lost down there a long time ago. Even though this is a brand new park, okay, it was one of the coaster installers. How's that for lore? It's time for pathing. You may be wondering why I'm being so utterly haphazard with it, but it will shortly be covered up, so don't worry yourself, dear. Time for that aforementioned path cover using my favourite Victorian tile, making a couple of minute adjustments by removing pieces from the group. Taking full advantage of a couple of spots guests won't traverse, I added a couple of ash trees. Considering our engineers aren't pole vaulters, I created a gate to make their lives a bit easier. A final bit of plaza adjustment before we do some proper theming. I gave our station a foundation, continuing our adventure theme by stealing aspects from what we have already.
the construction of the station was way too overwhelming for me, so I decided to work on the queue whilst I calmed down. Our exit is of course wheelchair accessible, allowing the entrance queue to utilise stairs along with the typical cattle pen design. For the side of the ramps I used plaster walls and wooden planks. I coloured them in various natural wood colours because wood. And for that good old cohesion, I painted the odd plank red. This, by the way, will be the park's red zone. Yes, we have zones. Quite overwhelming. Do you see this? Even more cohesion. As always, I blended the two ground textures with some hazard strips masquerading as metal tread plates. The signage originally said no entry, but I felt that was quite aggressive, so I changed it to exit only. Once again, I later added the Welsh off camera. Regulars of the channel will know I love some queue cover, and I'm partial to a cheeky pergola. I created this using wooden pillars and rope. With the structure complete, I shoved a whole load of foliage on top, giving it that jungle on a budget feel.
people often stress out over complicating the theming of a queue. However, it really doesn't take much to fully immerse your guests in the world you're creating. I created some custom fencing using sawn logs and wooden stakes. Lastly, I covered the ground in balcony pieces to tie everything together nicely. To hide the queue posts, I extended our natural theme using a tree and a tree stump. I even added an animatronic snake, but I switched it off. We're not made of money, jeez. I created a hanging ride sign extending out from our wonderful tree before adding a few weeds to the ground. I named our dive coaster Hoatzin, which is a stupid bird that can barely fly properly, often seen falling out of the sky, much like our guests will be on this ride. I highlighted the O not only because it looks pretentious, but it also represents the drop. To hide the backs of the letters, I clad the back of the sign with planks. Ok, I think I'm just about ready to continue with the station now. I created custom walls using the same plank design from the queue ramps. I went for a multi-height roof using wooden beams and corrugated iron. For the back facing wall, I figured only the public facing side would be painted, so I copied our planks, moved them a smidge and removed the paint. Our roof of course needs support, I created some complex rafters using pillars and beams. Making a start on the interior, I covered the floor with wooden panels. I wired in some secondary ride controls. Gosh, can you tell I used to be an electrician? I 
I even added some themed ride operators. <laughs> Look at their silly hats. I popped down a baggage hold before bringing some of that nature indoors. To fill this empty space, I added various adventure props. Sensational. I then covered some of the station fencing with wooden scaffolding planks. Last but not least, it's time for some sound and lighting. I popped a couple of these wonderful TMTK outdoor speakers into the queue before going lantern crazy. Now, you might be wondering why I haven't addressed the transfer tracks. Well, we're going to tackle the entire service road and connecting backstage areas in one episode at the end. It's going to be incredibly exciting. But with these last few lights being placed, that brings us to the end of the episode. I know, it is sad. But I'll be back next week where we add a water ride to the park. See you then.